Uh, praise the Lord for a blessed and holy Sabbath day. Amen? It's wonderful to be in the house of God. You know, this is a high Sabbath. You know, we're going to celebrate communion, the Lord's communion. First of all, I want to welcome everybody on Facebook or YouTube. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're tuning in. We're uh, going to be having uh, the title of my sermon, Sacred Meaning of Communion. You know, when we uh, delve into the communion of the Lord, we are growing closer to Christ. Amen? So it's always a blessing, especially to be here in the house of God on his blessed and holy Sabbath day. You know, God is so good to us. Amen? He's gotten us through another week. How many of us have had a, a long, trying week? You know, the Lord is good. You know, we got to be busy about his business 24-7. But uh, praise the Lord that he's given us a church that we can come worship together. And praise the Lord, amen? You know, we, we need to come with, with an attitude of thankfulness to the Lord for giving us life. You know, we, we don't realize uh, the goodness of God towards us, you know. Uh, we are created in His image, amen? And we're reborn of the Spirit. You know, we can have the mind of Christ living in us right now. So praise the Lord. I'm, I'm thankful for Jesus, my Lord and Savior, amen? How many of us are thankful? Praise the Lord. I see every hand go up. So the title is The Sacred Meaning of Communion. And now I'll start the PowerPoint now. Um, God is love, amen? In 1 John 4, 8 and 19, uh, he's, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. You know, uh, we're going to be studying that love for eternity, amen? You know, where is the love of God shown? on the cross of Christ you know that is going to be the one study that we're going to love to delve into for out throughout eternity so that's going to be a wonderful time you know it's wonderful when you can share your love with a dear loved one amen but wait till we share it face to face with Jesus the Father and the Holy Angels the Holy Ghost it's going to be a spectacular, amazing time together. The gospel message. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has fulfilled his mission in becoming the Lamb of God, uh, slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. Um, <clears throat> Jesus fulfilled his mission in becoming. Oh, I read that. <laughs> I'm sorry. John states in 129. He seeth Jesus coming towards him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. In this communion service, the plan of redemption is revealed. It reveals the love and grace of God to fallen sinful mankind. In Romans 5, 8 we read, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So... Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. God's supreme gift is His grace to us, amen? And this ministry of healing, 161, grace is an attribute of God exercised toward undeserving human beings. We did not seek for it, but it was set in search of us. God rejoices to bestow His grace upon us, not because we are worthy, but because we are utterly unworthy. Our only claim to his mercy is our great need. So just like Peter, when he was sinking in the water, what did he say? Lord, save me. That's the way we have to call out to God. Lord, save me, please. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, the word says, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So when we see how weak we really are, it points us to the Savior, for He is strong, mighty to save. God puts enmity between Satan and the woman's seed. You know, the, 
In Genesis 3.15, we see the first sermon ever preached on God's remedy for the great controversy between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels. We see the plan of redemption prophesied to follow mankind. You know, praise the Lord. Jesus was victorious at the cross. Amen. He crushed the serpent's head. You know, and he assures us when he rose from the dead that we can have eternal life because he overcame. And just like Christ, we are to overcome. You know, the Bible says in Revelation 12:11, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives to death even. You know, we got to stand for God's word, amen? And so we can be victorious over that serpent through Jesus Christ. This communion service points us to Jesus lifted up on the cross to be the propitiation for our sins. In John 3:14 through 17, this is probably the most famous quote uh, uh, passage in the Bible. And as Moses lifted up the serpent into, in, in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that so whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So even as Moses lifted up the serpent, look and live. You know, we have to look to the Savior on the cross. You know, we should spend a thoughtful hour uh, contemplating on what Christ did for us. You know, oh, the height, the depth, the width of Christ's love, the Father's love. No one can measure that love. When we survey the wondrous cross, when we survey the cross of Christ by the eye of faith through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, our stony hearts become like Christ's hearts. Pride and selfishness are banished from the soul temple, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into our souls. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? That we can have a new life in Christ through the power of the Word and the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. But we have to spend time in God's Word daily. Make it your first work to, to reconsecrate your life to the Lord and search the Scriptures. Amen? You know, they testify of Christ. There's the power of God here. In John 13, 4 and 5, we read, He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured forth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So Christ has instituted the ordinance of humility, you know, to show us there's nobody better than anybody else. We're all in the same human condition, amen? We all need a Savior, you know? Christ showed us, as the master of the, the apostles, the disciples, that he was humble, that he loved his people, you know? Christ was human just like you and I, but yet he was the God-man. And he came to show us the love of the Father for us. And by washing the disciples' feet, it, it humbled them. That their master would stoop to wash their feet. So, we got to be willing to serve one another with the spirit that works by love. Amen? And this is Desire of Ages 644 and 645. This action opened the eyes of the disciples. Bitter shame and humiliation filled their hearts. They understood the unspoken rebuke and saw themselves in altogether a new light. So Christ expressed his love for his disciples. 
Their selfish spirit filled him with sorrow, but he entered into no controversy with them regarding their difficulty. Instead, he gave them an example they would never forget. And so, praise the Lord. It's an honor and privilege to serve one another. Amen? Because Christ has taught us the right things. And then Luke 22, 14 through 20, the, gospel, uh, the passage about the, la- the supper, the communion service. We read, uh, when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire have I, have I, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. So, the water of life is everlasting. John 4, 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I'm reminded of uh, when Christ died on the cross and the soldier thrust that spear in his side. What came out? And blood. You know, the, it separated, showing that he was dead. And, uh, you know, that blood is efficacious to wash us and cleanse us from all sin and iniquity. In Leviticus uh, 17:11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, how much life is in that pure and holy life of Christ? You can't measure that amount of life, you know. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. And also the water that came out, you know. Uh, There's a river of life, amen. Where does it come from? The throne of God. And it flows right to the tree of life. So we can have that water of life today you know when we accept Christ into our hearts and minds we can have uh, his his body which is the bread and the water of life that is eternal life and it leads right to the tree of life when we eat of that we know the leaves are for the healing of the nations and the fruit when we eat of that we'll live eternally you know, it'll be a wonderful thing. But it's all centered on God, amen? He is the source of life. There is a fountain of blessing. Desire of Ages 187. The cisterns will be emptied, the pools become dry, but our Redeemer is an inexhaustible fountain. We may drink and drink again and ever find a fresh supply. He is in whom Christ dwells, has within himself the fountain of blessing, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. From this source he may draw strength and grace sufficient for all his needs. The living bread that came down from heaven. John six forty seven through 51. In the word of God we read, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. 
If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So praise the Lord. Jesus died for the world, amen, for everyone. But it's up to us to accept that precious gift. Okay, pray for the Holy Spirit. Desire of Ages 391. The Holy Spirit comes to the soul as a comforter. By the transforming agency of His grace, the image of God is reproduced in, his, in the disciples. He becomes a new creature. Love takes the place of hatred, and the heart receives the divine similitude. This is what it means to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is eating the bread that comes down from heaven. Christ's word is nourishment for the soul. And this is uh, letter 64, 1900. When men submit entirely to God, eating the bread of life and drinking the water of salvation, they will grow up into Christ. Their characters are composed of that which the mind eats and drinks. Through the word of life, which they receive and obey, they become partakers of the divine nature. Then their entire service is after the divine similitude, and Christ, not man, is exalted. And in uh, John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Living for Jesus is a life that is true. Manuscripts 112, 1898. Eating of the tree of life. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, says Christ, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even his, he shall live by me. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This is eating the, the fruit of the tree of life. So praise the Lord, the word of God is that bread of life. Christ is the living word. And uh, Hebrews 4.12 we read, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we know the word of God gives new life. And uh, it's powerful because it's powered by the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's sharper than any two-edged sword because it cuts, it separates righteousness from evil. Sin from righteousness. You know, it separates. And uh, reflect, reflecting Christ, 111.2. Prayer for the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is to be our spiritual food. I am that bread of life, Christ said. The world is perishing for want of pure, unadulterated truth. Christ is the truth. His words are truth, and they have a deep, deeper significance than appears on the surface and a value beyond their unpretending appearance. Minds that are quickened by the Holy Spirit will discern the value of these words. When our eyes are anointed with the holy eye salve, we shall be able to detect the precious gems of truth, even though they may be buried beneath the surface. So praise the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit as our guide. You know, we we need the Holy, the latter rain of the Holy Spirit today, amen? You know, rain down upon us, Lord. Send us the Holy Spirit. And here we have a depiction of uh, Christ in the Last Supper. We see the disciple John the Beloved on his right. And then we see the traitor, Judas, on the left. 
you know, John wanted to be close to the Lord because he loved him, amen? But Judas, he wanted the highest place in the kingdom to come. He was greedy. You know, he didn't have the love of Christ in his heart. Christ loved Judas, but he didn't reciprocate that love because of, you know, the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You can't serve God and mammon, you know? We have to learn to be like Christ. We have to have the same benevolent giving spirit. Amen? And then we will truly be blessed like John the Beloved and the rest of the disciples. But uh, praise the Lord, Christ works with each one of us no matter where we are. Amen? And he says, come up higher. Come on up a little higher. You know, until we're at the full stature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The law of heaven is God's love. This desires of ages, 651. To those who receive the spirit of this service, it can never become a mere, mere ceremonial. Its constant lesson will be, by love, serve one another. Whenever this ordinance is rightly celebrated, the children of God are brought into a holy relationship to help and bless each other. They covenant that the life shall be given to unselfish ministry. And this, not only for one another. Their field of labor is as wide as the master's was. The world is full of those who need our ministry, those who have communed with Christ in the upper chamber will go forth to minister as he did. So that's our great commission, amen? Go minister to those in the world. You know, Jesus came not to, seek, uh, to save the righteous, but to seek and save those who are lost. You know, uh, so that's our commission. Go out and serve the, the people in the world. And serve them with the gospel message, man. amen? For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. First to the Jew and then to the Greek. And uh, last slide, love one another. For brothers, you have been called to liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You know, I believe that the law of heaven is a self-sacrificing service of love one for another. You know, preferring one another before yourself. And then it will all work with that spirit that works by love. You know, the Holy Spirit, amen? <clears throat> this sacred service of Holy Communion is remi a reminder of what our Lord and Savior lived, suffered, and suffered for you and I, dear friends. This communion service shows us the true foundation of God's love for us. Um... The Ten Commandments, they are a transcript of his character, which is love. You know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus has instructed us to do his, this communion service often in remembrance of him. We are all blessed in Christian brotherhood as we partake of this service. When we accept Jesus, the living word, into our hearts and minds, we become partakers of the divine nature by the inward working of the power of God, the Holy Spirit. We receive power to live the life of Christ and become overcomers of every sinful propensity and act. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart. Can you all say that with me? I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart. You know, we need to say that every day, and he will, amen? And, and uh, we can be his disciples. We can grow in grace and power of the Holy Spirit. You know, he wants us to go out there and spread the three angels' message to this lost and dying world to win souls for his kingdom. That's what it's all about, amen? To follow Christ all the way. 
And uh, I believe with all my heart, Jesus is coming very soon, amen? We can see the signs of the times all around us. You know, <laughs> it's like it's increasing in rapidity even, you know, something new every day. So, praise God. God bless us all, amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this blessed and holy Sabbath day where we can be before you to worship you in spirit and truth, uh, song and praise, and in the beauty of holiness. Father, thank you for your holy angels, for your Holy Spirit, for your presence being with us here in this, this house, Lord. I pray for a special blessing on each individual here and their families. And I pray for those that are uh, watching us via Facebook and those that will watch it later on YouTube, Lord. Bless these people with salvation, Lord. Help them make that full surrender to you now. And uh, thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in our life that you have done for us. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, most of all. For his precious life, his precious and holy blood he shed for us. Wash us, cleanse us, Lord. Save us for your kingdom. This is our prayer. We ask it all in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For his sake we pray. Amen.